So last week we were uh, we were really really emphasizing the death of Christ, and we talked about how if you remember uh, we discussed how we would feel about Paris and the attacks of ISIS on Paris and how the greatest tragedy really is not the death of innocent civilians but rather it was the death of Christ on the cross. And so if you remember uh, last week, there was a change of perspective. We tried to change a perspective on three counts. First, the suffering, the sufferings that we experience in this life versus eternal life. So we talked about how we shouldn't see the life But anyway, we talked about how the sufferings of our life is very different from the sufferings that Christ had to endure. And at the same time, the sufferings of this life does not compare to eternal life, the future. Secondly, God makes peace with us and we're undeserving. If you remember the illustration we talked about last week, it was about how if we were to choose between war or forgiveness for the terrorists, we'd probably choose war. And God is supposed to choose war against us, sinners. And yet, He chose forgiveness. Third, the greatest true tragedy and the greatest true hope is found on the cross. So as we talked about that, we mentioned how the, the phrase, Christ died, or the, the issue of the death of Christ was repeated 12 times over and over again. Christ died, Christ died, Christ died, Christ died. Paul seems to keep repeating that, that theme. And so today, we're going to talk about a very controversial issue. The question is, yes, Christ died lagi. But, what's the effect of his death? For who <coughs> did he die? The, the controversy of this interpretation has a, well, has a phrase, this is an age-old debate. Okay? <coughs> and the issue is called particular redemption or limited atonement. In other words, did Christ die for all or did he die only for some? Another question is, did Christ make an actual payment for sin on the cross or was it just an offer? And third question is, was it a full payment or was it a down payment? Okay. Or installment basis. No, so, una ang death ni Christ, and next ang Holy Spirit, installment. So, what did Christ really accomplish at the cross? And why should we, why should we address this controversy? Dili ba pwede love-love na lang? Can we just not discuss this na lang? And a lot of people will say that. But here are five reasons why we should. Number one, God commands us to be good stewards of His Word. So, if there's a, a controversy or an issue in interpretation, we need to address that. Secondly, this is a core doctrine of our faith. The death of Christ, the propitiation, the penal substitutionary atonement of Christ is a core doctrine. So we need to be very clear on this. Third, your understanding of the atonement or of Christ's death on the cross, shortcut anaha, Christ's death on the cross, atonement. Okay? So your understanding of the atonement affects your view of God's sovereignty. Number four, it also affects your motive for good works, for doing good for your obedience, for changing your life, for repenting. It affects all that. And number five, your understanding of the atonement also affects your assurance and your peace of mind. Okay, if it's just a down payment, medyo kulba-kulba ni. Ato ang Christian walk. So it affects all these things. No? Now, if, if we go through the passage, and if you read it in one sitting, it sounds like Paul was making a nursery rhyme or a tongue twister. It's very funny if you read it straight, it's all about, if one man this, then one man that. If one man this, one man that. So, Marag, one man, if it was a song, the title would be the one man, and then the chorus would be death, life, grace, judgment. Death, life, grace, and one man, one man, one man, one man. Adam Christ, Adam Christ, Adam Christ. Marag, Paul. Sometimes I get the feeling uh, if, if a person read the, Paul's works, it's so confusing sometimes. Nga, morabitag ng nervous breakdown si Paul. Now, while you're reading it, appeal ka sa nervous breakdown niya. Yeah. No? But the truth is, if you really try to analyze what Paul was saying, he was very systematic. And he was trying to say something in the Greco Roman way of arguing. Kita mga 21st century ta. We group our arguments and statements differently. In the Greco Roman way, 
it's always this way. It's always uh, his thesis, his argument, conclusion. Thesis, nga, different thesis nga connected, argument, conclusion. Another thesis nga con connected nga pun, argument, conclusion. So, murag, balik balik ang tuyok. But for us, 21st century, balimanta. We group all our thesis in one in the introduction. The body is composed of all our arguments and then conclusion ng last paragraph or last part. So, medyo lisod kung i, we have to bridge that gap. The second reason why it's challenging is because the book of Romans was actually written for his audience to hear, not to read. The expectation was he would write that letter and the leaders of the church in Rome would read it in front of everybody. So he's writing it as if he's preaching. Kita, we're reading. So the reception is very different. How we receive it is not really auditory, but visual when you read the Bible. So we have to bridge the gap. Right? So we're going to do our best to do that today. Please bear with me. If you have your Bibles, please keep it in Romans chapter 5. And as I continue to read, please... Follow it. Follow also with your eyes. Para you get to read it, you get to hear it as well. Okay, so we'll start with verse 12. Romans 5, verse 12. So Paul says, diba, last week Christ died, Christ died, Christ died. Claro na na. Verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all have sinned. So we pause there, huh? So what's the problem? Our sin. And we have, if God is triune, we also have a triune problem. Our sin has a triple effect. Num how? Number one, our sin is inherited from Adam. Because Adam ate of the fruit, he sinned, nakuha na nato, inherited. The sin is inherited. Number two, our sin is compounded. Diba? Verse 12 says, because all men have sinned. In compounded means we're adding to the utang. So not only did we inherit a debt, a sin debt, we're adding to that debt. There's interest. Third, our sin is aggravated. Why is it aggravated? Because there's a law that says don't do this. What does that mean? For example, if I, if, uh, if I were a lawyer... <coughs> Or if I were a judge and a case was presented to me, and here's the situation. This man murdered the family. So, siguro 20 years or 60 years. You murder man a family, ana. But if the situation was different, the man, this man tied up the father and the mother while he killed the children. And then he tied up the father while killing the wife. And then he took a video. So, you know what I mean? He made the sin worse. That's called aggravation. He aggravated his sin. What makes our sin worse? The law. My entire life, we didn't know. If we didn't know that doing something is a sin and then we got caught, diba, we can say, I didn't know, so sorry. And then the police goes, Sige ha. Diba, there's a chance na the police will say, Warning na lang ha, because you didn't know, because you're a tourist. But if you're not a tourist and you say, I didn't know, mm, you're a citizen, how could you not know? The law aggravates sin. So we have a triple problem. Our sin is inherited, compounded, and aggravated. So look at verse 13 next. No? <clears throat> For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam. So what is he saying now? Paul is saying there's... Adam's sin is different. The people who lived after Adam before Moses, their sin was also different. Can you picture it? If there's a line, if there's a line, okay, so imagine there's a line here. This is the time of Adam, he sinned. This is the time of Moses where the law was given. This period in between, the sins that people committed here were different from the sin that Adam committed and the sin that we commit after Moses. Okay? Why was it different? Because with Adam, a command was given. God said, do not eat. Ang guess na ako, it was a mango. Okay, tempting mga mango. No, but diba? God said, don't eat the fruit. They ate the fruit. So the law was there. Between Adam and Moses, there was no law. So people would argue, oh, there was no law, man. So okay lang, because there's no law. You know, we didn't know. 
But Paul is saying they're not excused. Why? Because death still reigned. Physically, the people still died. Today, we say that death is normal. You agree? When there's a funeral, we'll say, Mogi ng lie. We have to accept. But for the Jew, death is very unnatural. It's not normal. It's not God's plan. God's plan was for us to live and live and live, live with Him. But because of sin, death came. So the Jew doesn't think death is natural, normal, circle of life, hakuna matata. It's not. Death is unnatural because of sin. And because of that, Paul is saying, if their sin was exempted, why did they die? How come death still reigns? The fact that they died means they're not excused. No one is. Now look at the key verse here, or key phrase. He says, Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. This is the key. Have you guys ever watched those uh, movies like Indiana Jones or National Treasure with Nicolas Cage or things like that? Or Dan Brown? Have you guys seen Dan Brown? Uh, what's it called? The, the Da Vinci Code. They were to discover a code, they needed what you call a cipher. A cipher is basically a, like a code key, a word, it's one word lang, that will actually translate the entire coded message or secret. Okay? This phrase is that cipher for interpreting this text, that Adam was a type. So Paul is saying, now Adam is a type of something, what is that thing? So what did Adam represent? Okay, so Adam is a type. And so from here, remember, huh? Christ died, Christ died, Christ died. Last week, we talked about how Christ died. Paul is going to reintroduce the death of Christ to us. But now he's going to go into detail. What was the effect? What did the cross accomplish? What did Christ really do? So now we're going to get into it. Verse 15. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. So the purpose, the issue here is the purpose of the atonement. Many died, many were graced or received grace. Gigrasyahan. So he's saying that because the tres- because of the trespass ng matay mga tao, because of the grace, people are going to receive love instead, forgiveness, mercy, and all that. Verse 16, And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. So first, he's talking about the nature of the event. The nature is death, sin, and then death. And the whole nature, the general is grace equals life. How? Now look at the result first. Verse 16, And the free gift is not, is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. As Christians, please don't say, uh, Hi, salamat, Christian, na tadi na tayo judge sa ni Lord. Actually, we're gonna be judged. And the judge will say righteous. Don't you want that? To be judged righteous? If you're truly innocent and someone is accusing you, and you're innocent, ha? Di ba you want a judge to come to declare you innocent? Diba? You'll say, let's go to court, come on! Para ma-prove ang case, finally! I want to be judged. But if you're guilty, you don't want a judge. What you want is, settle na lang nato na. Let's not, you know, let's just talk about things. Let's not go to a third party. It's, it's no need. Right? But because of Christ's death on the cross, we will be judged and we will be judged righteous. Therefore, Christians can actually look forward to the judgment. We can say, yes, second coming, the judgment day. But if you're not a believer, if you really reject everything and judgment day happens, oh my gosh, it's judgment day! You're afraid. So we will be judged. And this is a comfort. This is something we we can actually look forward to. Something we can be excited about because of the cross. And here's the the thing. If If Christ has already paid, for your sin. So you have a debt, Christ paid it already. Do you still have a debt to pay? Wala na. So can God judge you again for something that Christ already paid for? Wala na. 
in law, it's called double jeopardy. If you took criminal law or anything related to the law, if you commit a crime and you were judged innocent, you cannot be tried for the exact same crime again. Okay? The only way is if there's new incriminating evidence and blah, 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 blah. Or for example, let's, say, let's pretend we're going to watch Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Let's just pretend. And a generous person said, I bought tickets for all of you already. All you have to do now is go there. And the moment the gu I, I gave the guard uh, uh, selfies of your faces. So the moment you arrive there, the guard's just going to recognize you and let you through. Okay, bayad na. Do you have to pay for it again? No. So when people say, oh, no, you have to accept it pa. You have to, to claim your ticket at the ticket booth and you show the, the text message of your friend. There's no such thing. Of course, there's repentance and all that. That's a separate issue. But in terms of the atonement, your positional righteousness, how God sees you, it's done at the cross. It's finished. Jesus, it is finished. He never said it's about to be finished. And I'm just waiting for people to repent and then accept me as Lord and Savior. Then ma finish na. No. He said it is finished. It is done. Okay. So the purpose was to make an actual payment. Now look at verse. Okay. Look at verse 17. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and free gift of righteousness reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ. So what's the next issue? So the first issue was general. Okay. The next issue was, it was an actual payment. The third issue now is the effect, the residual effect of that payment. The residual effect is what reigns in your life. Death, or righteousness. Now he's talking about lifestyle. Okay? He's talking about how we live. If Christ truly died for Mr. X, his life is going to change. His life is not going to stay the same. He's not going to be, he's not going to say, oh, okay lang yapo no yung mag-sin ko eh. I'll live in darkness. I will live in wanton, chaotic rebellion against holiness. Christ died for me anyway. That's not possible. Okay? <coughs> Verse 17, Paul clearly says it, Death reigned through that one man. How much more will those who receive abundance of grace and free gift of righteousness reign? So, the righteous shall live by faith. Righteousness will reign in your life. You will change. There's no such thing as a person who says, Christ is Lord and Savior, and yet my life is still the same. Nothing's changed. I like what, how Paul Washer says it. If you were hit... This is Paul Washer is a missionary evangelist and one of my favorite preachers. And he says it this way. If you were hit by a 10-wheeler truck, your life would be forever altered. How much more if you were hit by the God who created everything? So if you say that your life hasn't changed, it really means you were never really saved or you never really had an encounter with the God of the universe. So it's, it's all about lordship. And we're going to discuss lordship more next week in Romans chapter 6. But here what it's saying is that our sanctification is assured. Our growth is assured. The death of Christ on the cross not only paid the debt of sin, but it also ensured our growth in holiness, in righteousness. Because righteousness will reign in your life. Now look at verse 18. Therefore, conclusion, therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. So now we're talking about the singularity of the action. One death, a one trespass, and one act of righteousness. We're not talking of, we're, the issue here is what cost it. Okay? So here, we'll give you a new term. It's called monergism. Monergism is a term that says, it is God himself who initiates by himself, for himself, okay, for his glory, for our sake, of course, but for his glory, by himself lang, changes us. By saving us, dying on the cross for us, he changes us through and through siyan atanan. That's what we call monergism. The opposite of that is called synergism. There's a synergy, meaning we're cooperating with God. 
So God says, I want to save you. And then you'll say, well, I'm not sure if I want to get saved yet. And then God says, ah, wako yung mabuhat, hindi mo ka musugot. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says when Christ died, He paid, that's it. We're not even born yet, He already paid. So how can we now, quote-unquote, make buot-buot? How can we intervene in that process when we weren't even born yet? We take it even further, we were chosen before the foundations of the world. So before planet Earth. So, okay, so, let's continue. Some people will say, now here's the controversy, they'll say, oh, look at verse 18, it says, to the justification and life for all men. So all men, lagi, past, present, future, on planet Earth, whoever lived, all men, man. We should take it literally. Again, reminder, what was the cipher? Adam was a type. The issue here is about representation. Second argument against that is this. If you want to take that all that phrase, all men, literally, then we should take everything literally, including the one man, Jesus Christ. So Jesus is man, not God, just man. Kay Adam was a man. So Jesus is also just a man. You see? So the interpretation of this text, I know it can be a little tricky, but we look at it based on the context of what Paul was actually trying to say, what he was trying to express. Okay, so verse 19. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. So from all, suddenly, many. Oh, let's take it literally. For a, as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So not all are sinners, the eye. Only many are sinners, but not all. You see it? Okay. So basically, the issue here is representation. Not the literal reading of the text. But you need to see where Paul is actually headed here. And now, let me give you an example for that. If someone said in, the cla- in a classroom, oh, I know, let's just pretend Sylvan... Uh, his birthday is coming up and he told his whole class he said everyone's invited does he mean every single person in the whole planet earth is invited to his party or is it the people in the classroom it's the people in the class so the context of sylvan's words are to the immediate audience so we also need to look at the context the all here is talking about the representation okay so just a reminder both camps, okay, let me just mention the camps, okay? There's what you call the Calvinists and the Arminians. Both, the, uh, the Calvinists believe that Christ died for his people, for the church, for the elect, for the children. The Arminians believe that Christ died for the entire planet Earth, for every single person, past, present, and future, okay? But there's a problem. Here's the problem. And here's the usual accusation. The Arminian always tells us, you limit the atonement of Christ. How could you limit it? Without realizing, they also limit the atonement. The question is, asa lang limit? The Calvinist limits the scope. The Arminian limits the effect. Okay? Let me clarify that. For the Calvinist, if there are 10 people, if there are 10 people, Christ's death on the cross purchased the salvation of, let's say, four. But sure, ng four. Sure na, 100% sure. Start to finish, God, bahala. So limited ang scope. Ang six, way labot. For the Arminian, it's also limited. Christ died for all ten. However, it's not perfect. It's not, it's finished. The, all the ten need to do their part pa. They need to repent. Then they need to make sure nga they obey. And if they fall away, they lose their salvation. And they need to get born again. Again. And then they could die again, again, and they need to get born again, 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 again. So, both actually limit it. The question is, where are you limiting it? Limiting it?